Now, Tyler runs an amusement park. He's having a job interview with these three clowns. But only one of them is not dangerous. Can you help Tyler hire the right person? The first clown doesn't cast a shadow, so he's probably a ghost. And the third clown is stealing money from the second clown's pocket. So he's a thief. Therefore, Tyler should hire the second clown. Peter and Holly are having their first date in the amusement park. They decide to ride the Tunnel of Love. At some point, it gets pretty dark inside the tunnel. And after the ride, Peter finds out that his wallet is gone. Tyler calls the police and questions three customers from nearby swan boats. Bella says, I'm sorry, I filmed a video on my phone. I didn't look around. Tim says, no way, bro. My wallet is gone, too. And Lisa replies, in the dark, I felt someone touching my bag. I pushed the attacker away. Can you spot the thief? It's Holly. Take a look at her bag. There are two wallets inside it. And here's one more in her pocket. Tyler receives a curious delivery. It has streets, but no pavement. It has cities, but no buildings. It has forests, but no trees. Also, it has rivers, yet no water. Can you guess what it is? It's a map. There are three bakeries in the park. Wendy has exactly $100 and she needs to buy 100 cupcakes. She must spend the money entirely. Also, Wendy must buy at least one cupcake from each bakery. The first shop is selling each cupcake at 5 cents. The second one is selling them at $1 and the third at $5. How many cupcakes should Wendy buy from each bakery? To fit the budget, Wendy should buy 80 cupcakes from the first shop, 1 cupcake from the second shop, and 19 cupcakes from the third shop. Brian decides to take a ride on the Ferris wheel. On his way up, someone suddenly throws ice cream right in his face. When the trip is over, he interviews three suspects. Zoe says, I don't eat ice cream, I'm on a sugar-free diet. Peter says, I didn't see anything, bro. I'm terrified of heights, so I kept my eyes closed the whole ride. And Fred says, sorry, I was streaming a video, so I didn't look around. Who is lying? Peter. If he's terribly afraid of heights, why would he ride the Ferris wheel? Brian is wandering around the park. Suddenly, someone approaches him from the back and grabs his phone. The thief is wearing a mask, so Brian can't see his face. The thief runs into a cafe and hides among the customers. Can you help Brian spot the criminal? It's this woman. She's hiding Brian's wallet in the menu. Tyler is walking down the street after a long work day. Suddenly, he pushes this lady. Can you guess why? Tyler saved her from getting hit by a car. Tyler keeps on walking and sees a group of ducks crossing the road. Can you count the exact number of ducks? Sixteen. Tyler enters a jewelry shop where his girlfriend, Mary, works as a saleswoman. Unfortunately, he finds her unconscious on the floor. He calls doctors immediately. They figure out that Mary was poisoned. Tyler questions three witnesses. The cleaning lady says, I was cleaning silver jewelry in the storage room. The guard said, 
I was having a lunch break outdoors and talking with my friend. And the boss says, I had a business meeting in another part of the city. Can you help Tyler figure out who poisoned Mary? Take a look at the hint that Mary left on the wall. It literally says that the boss did it. A few days later, Mary gets better and decides to prank Tyler. She brings three similar boxes to his house. There are two delicious cheesecakes in two boxes, and the remaining box contains dog food. Let's spin the boxes back and forth. Can you find the pranked box now? Aha! The second one! Tyler gets an urgent call from his assistant. Someone painted graffiti at a vegan restaurant in his park. Tyler interrogates three employees. The cleaner says, I had an urgent call from my mother, so I went outside the restaurant to the backyard. When I returned, the graffiti was already there. The waitress says, I was taking an order. Suddenly, I looked out the window and saw a person in a black hoodie. He dropped a paint can and ran away. And the cook says, I was wearing my earphones and frying chicken wings in the kitchen, so I didn't notice anything suspicious. Who's lying? The cook. It's a vegan restaurant. Why would he fry chicken wings? After getting exposed, the cook pushes Tyler away and escapes from the restaurant. Tyler follows him. The cook hides in a carnival tent. He puts on a costume to blend in with the crowd. Can you help Tyler find him? There he is! It was raining heavily outside. So his shoes got wet. Tyler is walking around the park and spots four weird details. Can you see them too? This teddy bear has three ears. There's no July 34th. There's pink ice cream inside the chocolate ice cream box. And this old lady is carrying a crocodile in a stroller. There are three fortune tellers working in the amusement park. Zelda, Salma, and Freya. One of them is an imposter. Can you decide who? Salma has an earphone in her ear, which probably means that someone is helping her when she tells fate. Later that night, Tyler finds Zelda lying unconscious at her workplace. There's a weird note in her hand. Tyler calls the doctors and the police. He also finds out that Zelda had only five customers that night. Alex, Rick, Emma, Rose, and Zoe. Can you figure out who's guilty? Rose. There's a tricky hint hidden in this note. Q plus 1 is R, N plus 1 is O, R plus 1 is S, and D plus 1 is E. Tyler spends all morning in his office. Then he leaves it for a couple of hours to have lunch with Mary. When Tyler gets back, he finds out that someone had robbed him. How? These six items are missing. Tyler is checking out these clowns' makeup before their performance. Can you spot the odd one out? It's this guy. He's the only one who has eyebrows. What about these houses? Can you find the odd one out? Yup, it's this one. 
Tyler receives four new tents. Unfortunately, one of them has a slightly different design. Can you spot which one? The second tent doesn't belong here. Tyler wants to improve the scary tunnel, so he gathers all actors playing ghosts and monsters for a brief team building. But there are real monsters and ghosts among Tyler's employees. Can you spot them? This guy is too transparent for a human. He's a ghost. And huge claws cut through this guy's sneakers, so he's probably a werewolf. Tyler wins a cute teddy bear for Mary. They get distracted for a second and then see that the toy is gone. They look around and find three suspects. Can you guess who is a thief? Although this lady is holding a similar teddy bear, it still has a different bow. This guy is carrying a box, and judging by his posture, it's hard for him to carry it. So it's probably really filled with heavy stuff. And the third guy's guitar is outside the bag. Which means he can be hiding the teddy bear inside the guitar case. Tyler throws an epic party at the amusement park. All guests are treated to free food and drinks. In the middle of the party, all the guests begin to fall asleep right on the dance floor. The next day, doctors check all the food and drinks from the party, and everything is perfectly fine. Can you guess what happened here? These balloons were filled with sleeping gas. In the middle of the party, they burst and made the guests fall asleep. A new ice cream parlor opens up in Matt's neighborhood. Yeah. He goes there to check it out. It's pretty crowded because they offer one free ice cream serving to each customer. Mm. Matt meets a pretty lady named Kitty in the line. He falls in love with her right away. But unfortunately, she's already married. Ooh. Can you find her husband among these guys? It's the second man. He's the only one who doesn't hold any ice cream. And Kitty is holding two ice cream servings, one for herself and one for her spouse. The next day, Matt missed his alarm. And now he's late for work. His boss is going to be furious. Matt might even get fired. But wait a minute. It turned out that the big boss is out of the office today. He's having a last-minute business trip, so Matt can relax. But suddenly, the boss calls him on the phone. Hello. Where are you? You got 10 minutes to get to the office. Matt replies, I am in the subway right now. Hmm. Well, I got something I need you to do for me. Call me when you're in the office. Matt is a pretty genius liar. Yeah. How did he fool his boss? Matt had a subway noise track on his computer. He played it when he was on the phone with the boss. Clever. Matt enters the local bakery on the way to the office. Hello. The cook brings two trays with fresh tartines. Take your time and try to spot 10 differences between them. Ready to see the answer? Here they are. What about these two breakfasts? Can you find 10 differences? Over here. Matt arrives at the office. Oh no. Oh. Someone has changed the password on their corporate computer. It consists of seven digits. Matt texts his coworker and asks about the new code. He receives the following reply. Can you help him figure out the code? The number of fingers implies the right digit in the password. So Matt should enter 1, 0, 5, 2, 3, 1, and 0. Matt is an illustrator. His boss sends some files and asks him to separate the images and add some colors. Oh. 
Unfortunately, all the layers are merged. Can you spot six different objects in this picture? Here they are. What about this one? Can you spot 11 objects? Over here. Matt's sister, Ashley, is getting married. He arrives at the event, and she asks him to take a picture of her with some friends. But someone pranks the bride in the middle of the photo shoot and spills paint on her beautiful dress. Can you guess who did it by just looking at this picture? It's the man on the right. He has a rope in his hands, and it's tied to the bucket. Ashley changes and the wedding goes great. After the ceremony, they throw a party in a restaurant. This place is very popular among the newlyweds. Matt faces three brides in the lobby, and spots the fake one right away. Hello. What about you? It's the third lady. She's wearing regular jeans and sneakers under her dress. And also, she's wearing a wig. She must be just trying on a costume. <laughs> the wedding dinner begins, and the waiters serve the first course. But suddenly, the lights turn off for 15 seconds. When the power is back again, Matt finds out that his golden watch is gone. He questions four suspects. Karen says, I was eating the wedding cake when the light turned off. It was delicious. Nick says, I was talking on the phone with my grandpa. When it got dark, I just continued our conversation. David says, I was washing my hands in the bathroom. And Stella says, I was taking pictures of the food for my Instagram. The local cuisine is so fancy. Who's lying? Karen. She said she was eating the cake. But take a look at the wedding cake. It hasn't been cut yet. The dinner has just started. It so happened that Matt is spending the Christmas holidays with three of his ex-girlfriends. They go to a fancy ski resort in Alaska. It was the first day of vacation when Matt was found poisoned in his bedroom. The police interrogate his ex-girlfriends. All the three ladies went away that day, and Matt stayed in the hotel for a nap. Megan says, I was shopping all day long. Lola says, I went to the beach to sunbathe and swim. When I returned, I found Matt lying unconscious. And Sophie says, I went to the local coffee shop to write my novel. Nobody wanted to join me. Who's lying? Lola, it's Christmas time, so it should be very cold in Alaska. She couldn't swim and sunbathe outdoors. Finally, Matt gets better and leaves the hospital. Yeah. He returns to the ski resort and takes a look at the mountains. What are they doing wrong? This guy is riding a snowboard. He doesn't need ski poles. After the Alaska trip, Matt gets a new job in New Orleans. Oh, yeah. He finds a great apartment and moves in. Three neighbors knock on his door to greet the new neighbor. One of these ladies is a real witch. Can you spot who exactly? The first lady brought a cake. It looks pretty innocent. The third lady brought a plant. Looking good too. But the second woman brought a basket with food and there's a snake crawling around her gifts. Matt wakes up in a weird maze in the middle of the night. The only way to escape is to walk through this labyrinth. But unfortunately, there are four dangerous creatures waiting for him on the way. First of all, there's a Gorgon who turns everybody she sees into stone. Secondly, a werewolf. It's a full moon, so he's very hungry. The third creature is a tree goblin. He can grab people with his strong branches and it's impossible to get out. And finally, there's a siren who can use her singing to make you do anything she wants. Luckily, Matt has four magic potions which can be helpful. Each potion has a 24-hour effect. If you spill the first potion on anybody, they'll become silent. The second potion will make any creature very weak. The third potion turns anyone into a vegan. 
and the fourth potion causes blindness. Can you help Matt distribute the potions among the creatures correctly? Matt should use the Silence Potion to neutralize the Siren, use the Blinding Potion against the Gorgon, turn the Werewolf into a Vegan, and weaken the Tree Goblin. The next day Matt receives a postcard. There's a note hidden in this face. Can you figure out the message? The features of this face form the word Liar. Matt purchases a tour to see the sights of the state. He takes a nap on the train. After a while, he wakes up and sees that his tablet is missing. Matt interrogates four tourists nearby. Liam says, Sorry, I was listening to the music, and my eyes were closed. I don't know who did it. Willow says, I think it was Ronald. He's very suspicious. Why would he need so many gadgets on a tourist trip? Ronald says, I have a bunch of my own gadgets. I don't need your old, outdated tablet. And Mary says, I'm sorry, but I was sleeping. Can you spot the thief? It was Mary. She hid Matt's tablet inside her magazine. Ah. Matt goes to the dining car. There he sees four tourists speaking an unknown language, so Matt can't understand them. But still, he manages to spot this lady's boyfriend right away. Can you see him too? It's the second guy. They have similar tattoos on their necks. Matt wakes up locked in an abandoned house. He finds three doors, but only one of them leads to freedom, and he has only one chance to find it. Hungry tigers are waiting behind the first door. There's a big fire behind the second door, and a werewolf is hiding behind the third door. How can Matt escape? He should just wait until the fire goes out. Yeah. Jill and Jim live in the US. One day Jim goes on a business trip to Europe. Jill misses him very much, so she calls him up. She asks Jim to take a selfie and send it to her. He agrees. Jill gets furious as soon as she sees the picture. Jill. You're a liar. How did Jill figure it out? Europe and the US are in different time zones, but in Jim's photo, it's noon. That's American time. He never left the country. Can you find a zombie in this picture? Over here. What about this ski resort? Can you spot any zombies? Hello? And now let's see if you can find a zombie in this amusement park. It's hiding over here. The biggest bank in town was robbed last night. The local police investigate this case and find two suspects. They go to search their houses. The officer sees a clue and figures out who the criminal is. How did he guess? Let's take a look at the walls. There's the same picture in both houses. But this one is hanging upside down. There's probably a stash behind it. Busted. A teacher has 21 colored pencils. Seven red, seven yellow, and seven blue. She needs to divide them into two piles so that one pile would have three times fewer red pencils than the second one. And the second pile should have two times fewer yellow pencils compared to the first pile. How many blue pens would be in each pile? Zero. The teacher had 21 pencils, not pens. Can you rearrange these crayons and make four triangles? To solve this mystery, you gotta think outside the box.
Here's the correct answer. Let's make the task a little harder. Can you remove just two crayons to make two squares? Ready to see the result? There you go. Donna goes to a supermarket and spots something weird. Two of these women are pregnant, but one of them just stole a watermelon. Can you guess who? It's the third lady. She's wearing high heels, not what pregnant women would wear to a grocery store. Kitty wakes up in a creepy basement. She needs to open this door to escape. Can you guess the right order to press the buttons? Kitty needs to make the word unlock from the first letters of each emoji. Therefore, she should press the buttons in the following order. Unicorn, nose, lobster, onion, cactus, kiss, and voila. Today is Cassie's birthday. She brings a cake to work to celebrate with her colleagues, Stan, Gemma, and Rosie. Cassie unpacks the cake in the office kitchen. Suddenly Granny calls, and Cassie goes outside to talk to her. After a while, Cassie returns and finds her precious birthday cake on the floor. She questions everyone. Stan says, I was sending an important email so I didn't look at the kitchen. But I think it was Gemma, she's just pretending to be your friend. Gemma says, I went to the toilet to wash my hands. When I returned, the cake was already on the floor. And Rosie says, I don't know what happened. I went to the opposite side of the room to turn on the coffee machine. I made cappuccino for everyone. Who's lying? The coffee machine is off and all the coffee mugs are empty. Therefore, Rosie lied. She was busy doing something else while Cassie was away. Detective Bold is having lunch at his favorite cafe. He looks through the window and sees his neighbor Zelda rushing home. They both live next to the cafe. Suddenly, Zelda runs back and approaches the detective. Zelda, please help me. My apartment was robbed while I was out. I didn't touch anything. I just ran here right away to find you. Detective Bold goes to see the crime scene. He looks around and says, Stop fooling around, Zelda. There was no robbery. How did he know? Take a look at this umbrella. Zelda carried it with her when she was rushing home, but she told the detective that she didn't touch anything at the crime scene. She just threw her stuff around the room to make it look like a robbery. Take a look at this fancy group of people. One of them is a real vampire. Can you guess who? It's the second guy. The first guy struggles with drinking this reddish beverage. The lady is just wearing a cosplay costume. And the guy on the right is taking a selfie, which means he shows up on camera. Therefore, he's a human being. Jeff calls the police early in the morning. Jeff, my neighbor cut down a tree on my car. A policeman arrives soon. Policeman, what happened? Jeff, my neighbor and I had a quarrel last night. When I was ready to go to bed, I saw him standing in front of my car. In the morning, I went out to drive to work and saw this. My car is pretty old, but he still has to pay compensation for the damage. The policeman questions Jeff's neighbor. He says, Jeff is a bit weird. He's always trying to start a quarrel for no reason. I didn't touch the car. I was sleeping all night long. The policeman examines the car and immediately realizes which of the neighbors was lying. Who cut the tree down? Can you guess? Jeff. He cut down the tree with this ax and then tried to put the blame on his neighbor to hit him up for money. Mike is an astronaut. His team consists of two other people. They're twins, Rob and Bob. 
They go to Mars for a month to study the local life forms. Time flies by quickly, and today they have to return to Earth. Mike goes to say hi to his little crew, but he finds six identical people in the spaceship. Mike realizes that the Martians can take any shape. Whom should he take back to Earth? This astronaut has three fingers. This guy's hair color is different. This imposter has forgotten to put on human ears. And this guy has different eye color. So the real Bob and Rob are over here. What's wrong here? The goalkeeper is holding a tennis racket. Also, why do they need two hockey pucks? Shelly downloads a dating app hoping to find new love. She likes several guys. They begin to chat and share some selfies. All three guys claim to be single and living alone, but only one of them is telling the truth. Can you guess who? The first guy sent Shelly a selfie from his bathroom. He's wearing a bathrobe, but there's another silk bathrobe hanging in the background pink and small. Why would he need it if he's living alone and the second guy is obviously fond of jewelry. He's wearing a ring on each finger, including the ring finger. So he's probably married. Only the third guy is telling the truth and Shelly should give him a chance. A dangerous criminal escapes from prison. The police are chasing him and the trail leads them into a small village. They question the locals and check the fields. Soon they see a farmer in a cornfield. The detective asks him if he had seen any suspicious strangers around. Farmer. Sorry, I didn't focus on what's going on around me. I was too busy dealing with my corn. It's getting dark soon, and I need to harvest as soon as possible. The detective immediately figures out that this guy is the wanted runaway criminal. How? Corn is not harvested like this, so he can't be a real farmer. Can you see any odd details here? The phone is unplugged, and the laptop is missing a keyboard. Can you spot anything odd? Take a look at this guy. His fishing style is pretty weird. What about this scene? What are they doing wrong? This lady is skating on the pavement. Becky attended her high school reunion last weekend. Hello. All of her friends seem to be doing really well in life. Connor showed up wearing clothes from expensive brands. Hello. Matilda had not just one, but two of the latest smartphones. Oh. Tom showed up in a fancy sports car, and Beth was wearing a luxurious watch on her wrist. Take a good look at Becky's friends. Can you tell who is really rich? Well, let's see. If you look closely, Connor didn't take off the tags from his clothes. This probably means that he's planning on returning them after the reunion. Yeah. Matilda's phones are fake. Look at the label. It's just a copy of the original brand. Ah. And Beth's watch is way bigger than her wrist. Which means that the watch is not really hers. So, Tom is probably the richest person at the reunion. Oh, yeah. Amy's favorite band is in town, and she really wants to go to their concert. She asks her stepmother if she can go. Mm. But she says she will only allow Amy to go if she does a series of things for her. Oh. The first thing the stepmother asks is for Amy to bring her some water in a colander. Hmm. To get this right, Amy needs to think outside the box. Okay. Can you help Amy figure out how she can do that? Amy needs to freeze some water and put the cubes in the colander. Yeah. Technically, frozen water is still water, right? Next, 
Her stepmother asks Amy to pick out the perfect evening dress for her. Amy walks into her stepmother's closet, and there are three dresses, a red, a green, and a blue. Take a look at the picture. Which dress should Amy choose? If you look closely, the button on the blue dress is about to come off. The green dress has a big paint stain on it, so Amy should pick the red dress. Yes! Before Amy can take the dress to her stepmother, the woman enters the room. She sees the stain on the dress and starts to shout at Amy, How could you do this to my dress? But Amy says she didn't do anything wrong, and that the paint was already there when she walked into the closet. Yes! The stepmother asks Amy to find the culprit. Oh. If she could figure out who had stained her dress, then Amy could go to the concert. Okay. The three main suspects are Amy's stepsisters, Ella, Bella, and Gabriella. What? They don't like Amy, so it's likely that one of them splashed paint on their mother's dress in order to frame her. When the stepsisters are out of the house, Amy sneaks into their bedroom to try to find the culprit. Take a look at the room. The first bed belongs to Ella, the second belongs to Bella, and the third bed belongs to Gabriella. Can you tell who did it? It was Gabriella. Her bed is the third one on the left. And if you look closely, it has a bucket of paint under it. <laughs> Emily and Barbara are getting ready for a girl's night out. Yes! They are putting on makeup and getting their hair done. They have pretty similar tastes, and their things look pretty much the same. Mm. But one of them has more money than the other. Oh. Looking at the image, can you tell which one has the more expensive stuff? Take a look at Barbara. Her dress kind of gives it away since it's obviously a knockoff. Hmm. So Emily is the one with the more expensive stuff. Harry decided to backpack around the world on his own. Yeah. On the plane, he sat next to a girl. He asked her where she was from. Yes. But instead of answering, she showed him two emojis on her cell phone. Oh. Take a look at the image. Can you tell which country the girl is from? Let's see. That's an iron and a piece of land. I guess she's from Ireland? As soon as Harry landed in Paris, he went strolling along the streets to find a place to stay. He found a cute little hotel and decided to go inside. Big mistake. Why? Take a look at the window on the last floor. It looks like there's a ghost. Yikes. I'd look for another place to stay if I were him. <laughs> After he found a better hotel to stay in, he decided to get lunch. He ordered the classic French onion soup. Yeah. But when his dish came, it was filled with cockroaches. <gasps> he called the restaurant's manager to tell them about the incident. The manager said, This is unacceptable. I will find the person who did this and fire them immediately. There were three suspects. The cook said that he had prepared the soup as usual. It was okay when he passed it to the waiter. The waiter said that he hadn't touched the soup. He just served it to Harry and hurried to take the order from another table. The manager also questioned the cleaner, who said that he had spent the last hours cleaning the bathroom and had no idea what the fuss was about. Can you tell who is guilty? No one. Look at the ventilation system. It's full of roaches. They must have crawled out of it and fallen into Harry's soup. Yikes. There are three passengers in the business class of an international flight that is headed towards Rome. Take a look at these three people. Hmm. The first lady looks pretty well dressed. She's wearing a luxurious designer handbag and is texting on her expensive phone. Hello. The guy in the middle is working with stock charts on his laptop. And the third guy is enjoying a cup of coffee while reading an article in the Financial Times. Can you tell which one is the real billionaire? Let's see. The woman may look well-dressed, but if you see the tag on her clothes, it says 100% polyester. It's unlikely that a billionaire would wear something like this. <laughs> the guy working with stock charts is wearing old, ripped shoes. I doubt that's a fashion choice, so he's probably not a billionaire. Oh. That leaves us the last guy. If you look closely, the article he is reading is about him. 
The title of the article is The World's Newest Billionaire. Oh, yeah. I guess we found our guy, huh? <laughs> Detective Smith was called to investigate a burglary at the city's museum. Oh. A priceless diamond disappeared, and the thief left no trace behind. After analyzing the museum's security cameras, Detective Smith gathered three suspects. The security guard, the museum's curator, and a visitor. The security guard said he only left his post during lunchtime, and he could swear that the diamond still wasn't missing at that time. Hmm. The museum curator spent the day guiding a tour of the museum for a foreign group. Hmm. They came to see the diamond at the beginning of the tour, and it was still shining bright in its place. The visitor said he only popped in for a quick visit, and didn't even pass through the Metsi aisle where the diamond was kept. Hmm. After these three interviews, Detective Smith found the thief. Can you tell who it was? It was the visitor. First of all, he knew the exact location of the diamond inside the museum. Plus, take a look at that string he's fiddling with in his left hand. Detective Smith pulled it from under his sleeve and voila, the diamond was attached to it. I guess he didn't have time to go home and get rid of the diamond, huh? Julie and her friends decided to spend the weekend at a cabin in the woods. They arrived on Friday evening and spent the night playing board games and telling spooky stories. When they woke up on Saturday morning, they found that someone had stolen all their food supply. Oh, no. The door's glass was shattered, but other than that, there were no signs of who could have done it. Hmm. So the group decided to search the surrounding woods to see if they could find the culprit. Take a good look at the scene the group stumbled upon and see if you can find out who took their food. What's that at the left corner? Those look like bear footprints, huh? And not just one, but rather an entire family of bears. Oh, and they even left an Oreo wrapper on the ground as evidence. Yep, these grizzlies were the culprits for sure. Atlas woke up in the attic of an abandoned house. He tried to find a way out of the house, but all he could find was a room with three doors. Each door hit a different danger. The windows and floor behind the first door were made entirely of magnifying glass, which meant that the sunlight would probably burn him if he entered. The second door hit a room full of poisonous gas, and behind the third door was a hungry lion. What should Atlas do to escape? He should wait until it's nighttime and use the first door. Sydney told her mom that her gymnastics team would go to a sports camp for the weekend. She asked her mom to help her pack a bag for the trip. Her mother packed everything she thought her daughter would need. When Sydney came back from the weekend, she was telling her mother all about the trip. Okay. But somewhere during the conversation, she asked her mother why she hadn't packed a toothbrush. The mother immediately knew Sydney was lying about where she had really been that weekend. Hmm. How? Because Sydney's mother did pack a toothbrush, but she put it under Sydney's gymnastics clothes. If Sydney had really gone camping, she would have used the clothes and found the toothbrush. Kimberly discovered three bags in an old attic along with a note. The note said that there were one million dollars inside one of the bags. It also said that the two other bags were empty. She only had one chance to figure out which bag had the cash, and she could trust that one of the messages written on the bags was true. On the first bag, it said, the cash is not here. On the second bag, it was written, the cash is not here. The last bag read, the cash is in the second bag. If you were Kimberly, which bag would you choose? You should choose the first bag. If only one of the clues is true, then the money is in the first bag. The police have been after Mr. Burke for many years, trying to prove he's involved in illicit activities, but they never managed to catch him. One day, Detective Lawrence decided to make a surprise visit to Mr. Burke's office. As soon as the detective arrived, Mr. Burke's secretary said he was away on a business trip. Hmm. The detective asked to see Mr. Burke's office and took a picture of it, but he wasn't allowed to touch anything without a warrant. So. Detective Lawrence went back to the station and got a warrant. When he returned to Mr. Burke's office, he noticed someone had been in there. Take a look at both pictures and try to find out what Detective Lawrence saw.
The desk lamp is tilted and the books are in different places. Someone definitely was in that room. Detective Lawrence decided to search Mr. Burke's entire office. In one room, he found there were footprints up until the middle of the room, and then they disappeared. The only window of the room was open. Oh no, Detective Lawrence shouted. I can't believe he escaped again. He took a picture of the room and took it to the police station. At the station, he showed the picture to the other detectives, and one of them said he had cracked the case. Huh. Take a look at the picture. How did the detective solve the case? The detective understood that Mr. Burke was a shapeshifter. This explains why the footprints didn't reach the window. Plus, look at all the bird food on the floor. He probably shapeshifted into a bird and escaped. I know something that will wake your brain up better and faster than coffee. Yep, it's time to find your magnifying glass. Oh my God. Look at this picture attentively. What's wrong here? Each of these four people has a slice of pizza in their hands, but only three pieces are missing from the pizza box. You have three jars that are all mislabeled. One jar contains apples, another contains oranges, and the third jar contains a mixture of both apples and oranges. Mm. You are allowed to pick as many fruits as you want from each jar to fix the labels on them. What is the minimum number of fruits that you have to pick and from which jars to correctly label them. Yeah. Let's look at this scenario. You pick a fruit from the jar labeled apples and oranges, and you get an apple. That means that the jar should be labeled apples. Now, the jar labeled oranges has to be labeled apples and oranges. As it can't contain oranges, and we've already got the apples jar, a similar scenario applies if it's an orange you take out of the jar labeled apples and oranges. So, you just need to take one fruit from the jar, apples and oranges, to label all the jars correctly. A farmer once challenged an engineer, a physicist, and a mathematician to fence off the largest amount of area using the least amount of fence. Hmm. The engineer shaped his fence like a large circle and said it was the most efficient way. The physicist made a long line and said that fencing off half of Earth was the best. The mathematician laughed at them and showed his design, <laughs> which beat the others. What did he do? The mathematician made a small circular fence around himself and declared himself to be on the outside. Every day after work, Jack arrived at the train station at 5 p.m. His wife left home in her car to meet him there at exactly 5 p.m., picked him up, and drove him home. One day, Jack got to the station an hour early and started walking home. He was walking until his wife picked him up along the way. They got home 30 minutes earlier than usual. How long was he walking? The best way to think about this problem is to consider it from the perspective of the wife. Her round trip was decreased by 30 minutes, which means each leg of her trip was decreased by 15 minutes. It means that Jack must have been walking for 45 minutes. Logan is a special agent who's trying to catch a notorious villain. After long months of investigation, he finds the criminal's headquarters. But the door is locked, which is not a surprise really. Logan sees a screen next to the entrance. He touches it, and the display lights up. Hmm, it must be a riddle. And our special agent needs to solve it to get inside. Hmm. Add one line to make it right. 9.50 equals I-O-I-O-I-O. -I -O -I -O. Logan cracks the puzzle in no time. What's the answer? Nine point five zero equals I O T O I O. Oh, yeah. The door opens and the man steps into a dark corridor. After walking for some time, Logan notices another door. Ah, a code lock again. The man also spots a calendar hanging on the wall. At the bottom, there are several letters M, F, 
W. After connecting the dots, the special agent figures out the code. What is it? It's 153. The letters stand for the days of the week, Monday, Friday, and Wednesday. Monday is the first day, Friday is the fifth, and Wednesday is the third one. Oh, yeah. Look at these two families. Which one is fake? What do you think? Well, the family on the right has weird dietary habits. They allow their son to eat the whole cake on his own. But maybe they just don't care about healthy eating. The family on the left, though, seems to be perfectly fine. But have you spotted a USB port covered by the necklace the mother of the family is wearing? She's a robot, and all this family thing is just a joke. Now, look at these prisoners. Who is more likely to escape? Huh, gotcha. Neither of them. The one on the right will be stopped by the prison guard, while the one on the left will end up face to face with these pretty unfriendly dogs. How about these girls? Which one lacks common sense? <laughs> that was another tricky question. Both of them aren't the brightest bulbs in the chandelier. The one on the left is going to post a photo of her credit card on her social media. And the one on the right is going to share the details of her ID and plane ticket with her followers. That's incredibly unsafe. It was the first day of school when the principal's wallet went missing. There were three suspects, the gardener, the math teacher, and the coach. Oh, no. Here's what they said. The gardener was mowing the front lawn. The math teacher was checking the surprise test he'd given his students. And the coach was meeting new people who wanted to join the school's soccer team. Who took the wallet? It was the math teacher. No one gives surprise tests on the first day of school. Look at these women. Can you figure out which one isn't pregnant? It's the woman on the right. Her belly is strangely shaped and something seems to be moving under her clothes. Ugh, creepy. One day, the emperor asked his general what he should choose if he was offered either justice or a lot of gold. I'd choose the gold. The general answered without hesitation. The emperor was taken aback. Oh. I would have been disappointed even if this was the choice of a servant, the emperor said. But coming from you, it's not only disappointing but also shocking and sad. But the general justified his answer to the enraged and hurt emperor without a problem. What did he say? He said that people asked for what they didn't have. Under your majesty's rule, he then added, justice is available to everybody, but I am a spendthrift and always short of money. That's why I said I would choose the gold. The answer pleased the emperor, and his respect for the general was restored. The police arrived at a ski resort early in the morning. At night, someone attacked the manager of the hotel, and he was taken to a hospital, still unconscious. The police suspected three people, Laura, James, and Arthur, who had arrived the day before. The officers inspected their rooms, and here's what they found. Look at these things attentively and try to understand who attacked the manager. It was Arthur. Look, he doesn't have any warm clothing, which means he didn't come for skiing. Allison is a big boss in an international company. One day, she's hurrying to an important meeting when she notices the documents she needs haven't been printed out. But she's asked at least three of her subordinates to do it. Ian says he's just returned from the supermarket because they've run out of coffee beans. Robert claims he's been terribly busy drafting a new contract. 
And Alice answers she's been in the kitchen, preparing snacks and making coffee for the meeting. Mm. Who's actually forgotten about the task and is making up excuses at the last moment? It's Alice. There's no coffee in the office. Then how could she make it? Rich businessman Mr. Hudson had a serious disease and was staying at the best hospital in the city. He was treated with pills invented by a scientist working in that hospital. Mr. Hudson was feeling better and better and was getting ready to be discharged. But then, one morning, he was found in critical condition. The police had four suspects, the cleaner, the businessman's nurse, his assistant, and the scientist. The cleaner said that Mr. Hudson liked when his room was tidy, so she came every day to clean it. The nurse said that she gave Mr. Hudson's injections every morning, and they had even become friends. The scientist was very upset. His disease was complicated, but we've made such progress. And today, this happened. And the assistant answered that her boss asked her to bring his favorite sweets every day. And she did just that. Can you figure out who caused the worsening of Mr. Hudson's condition? It was the nurse. Mr. Hudson was treated with special pills. What injections is she talking about? What? Harrison was walking home when someone threw something at him and knocked the guy out. When he came round, he found himself in a room with four doors and a tiny window. Harrison opened the window, but it was too small for him to squeeze through. Mm. Suddenly, the guy spotted a piece of paper lying on the floor. It was a note that said, Only one door leads outside. The other three doors don't lead anywhere. You can try to open just one door and only once. If you don't succeed, all of them will be locked forever. Oh. Harrison thought for a while and made the right choice. Yeah. How did he figure out which door was the one he needed? He opened the window. This created a draft. The guy checked the keyholes and felt some cool air coming from one of them. It was the door to freedom. Detective Sheldon Copper was resting at a beach resort when an unpleasant accident happened there. Someone pushed elderly Mrs. Stevenson into the swimming pool when there was no one around. But this someone didn't know the lady was once the best swimmer at her university and she never stopped practicing. So it wasn't difficult for her to cross the swimming pool and get out of it at the other side. Sheldon asked the lady if she had seen the attacker. She didn't but she was sure it was someone who knew she'd just received a huge inheritance. Hmm. The detective needed to talk to three people. They were Mrs. Stevenson's son, Terry, her granddaughter, Gloria, and her niece, Judy. Terry said, These days, I've been very busy. Something urgent came up at work. I don't even have time to leave my room to go for breakfast or dinner. Hmm. Gloria asked Sheldon to keep her secret. She was seeing a waiter she had met at a beach cafe. If her relatives found out, they would be furious. And Judy told Sheldon she'd taken a car to go shopping in the city center. Who's lying? Terry. The man looks sunburned. But how can it be if he hasn't left his room for days? Jaden bought a beautiful ring for his girlfriend. He wanted to propose to her at the weekend. He left the ring on his desk at home and went to work. But when he got back in the evening, he didn't find the ring. Only his three sisters were at home that day, and none of them liked his girlfriend. He went to question each of them. Mia was in her room. She said she'd spent the whole day there painting the walls. Emily was in the kitchen. She answered that she'd been cooking a birthday cake for her friend. And the youngest, Nora, was in the garden. She said she'd been planting roses. It didn't take Jaden long to figure out who had taken the ring. Do you know who it was? It was Nora. She looks too tidy for a person who was supposedly spending the entire day in the garden. What? Plus, she doesn't have any gardening tools. The best player of Julian's volleyball team disappeared right before the game. 
Julian's main suspects were three players from the rival team. Jackson said, I've just returned from the gym. I was warming up before the competition. Leo had to pick up his wife and daughter from the hospital, and Ryan claimed he'd fractured his leg, and the team doctor was giving him a massage. Yeah. Who's behind the player's disappearance? It's Ryan. Getting a massage when your leg is broken? Really? Uh -huh. Can you figure out the answer to this rebus riddle? The answer is summary. Oliver is walking in the rain. Suddenly, he sees a woman without an umbrella or hat. But she's not getting wet at all. How is this possible? The woman is walking inside a covered area, such as a covered sidewalk. Four friends go hiking and take a picture by the lake. Can you spot anything weird? This guy doesn't have any reflection in the water. Sarah checks into a fancy hotel. She feels very hungry, but unfortunately Sarah missed the dinner hours. That's why she calls room service and orders a vegan dinner set. Fifteen minutes later, someone knocks on her door. She looks through the peephole first. Sarah. Oh great, a fake waitress! How did she know? The waitress is fake because she didn't know that Sarah ordered a vegan meal. Kelly and Kim start a quarrel on the plane. It's Kim's private jet, so she wants everything to be her way. But Kelly gets mad at her. She runs up to the exit door, opens it and jumps out. It happens so fast that the crew don't have time to do anything. Kelly doesn't have a parachute. She breaks her leg but survives. How come? The plane had already landed. Nick is driving down the road and his car runs out of gas. He sees a cabin in the woods and decides to ask for help. When he gets there, he finds three people inside. They offer to help him, but only if he agrees to stay there forever. Why? Nick stumbled upon a group of runaway criminals. They're afraid that he would tell others about their location. Early in the morning, Detective Robinson receives a call from his neighbor, Ethan. Ethan, please come as soon as possible. Someone attacked my wife. Robinson arrives at Ethan's house and sees this scene. Can you guess what happened to his wife? Take a look at the calendar on the wall. They pranked the detective because it was April 1st. The city has been taken over by zombies. Let's take a look at this group. Only one of these zombies is a male. Can you guess who? The first zombie is wearing a bra, and the second one has a badge with a female picture and name. Therefore, only the third zombie is a male. Tom works in a secret agency specializing in people with psychic abilities. He's having an interview with three people claiming to be superheroes. But only one of them really possesses some supernatural powers. Can you help him spot this person? Take a look at the third lady. She's holding her phone with the power of her mind without even touching it. Stella and Bella go on vacation. They take two pictures on the beach. Can you spot 10 differences between them? You can pause the video if you need additional time. Ready to see all the 10 differences? Here they are. Steve arrives at work and turns on the corporate laptop. Oh no, someone has changed the password. 
Steve looks around and finds a sticker with a clue. 32, 18, and 29. He enters the number, but it doesn't work. Can you help him crack the code? Steve should literally enter three twos, one eight, and two nines through underscores. 222, 8, 99. Gabriel is an art teacher. He enters the studio to check his students' work. One of these people is a ghost. Can you guess who? It's the model. She's posing for a portrait, but everyone sees through her. Dan wakes up in a creepy cage. He needs to figure out a five-number code to escape. He only has this picture as a clue. Can you help Dan crack the code? To solve this mystery, we need to count the number of legs that each object in this picture has. The human has two legs, the fish has zero, the ladybug has six, the dog has four, and finally the spider has eight legs. So the correct code is 20648. Alex went hiking and got lost in the woods. The sun had already set when he finally found a road. Three drivers stop and offer him a ride to the nearest village. Can you help Alex choose the safest option? There's a zombie arm sticking out of the second car's trunk, and the third driver has suspicious pointy ears and shiny eyes, so he's probably a werewolf. Therefore, Alex should probably trust the first driver. I'm very easy to lift, but very hard to throw. What am I? I'm a feather. Kim downloads a dating app hoping to find her true love. She likes these three men equally. They begin to chat, and the guys send her some selfies. Each man claims to be single. But in fact, only one of them doesn't have a girlfriend. Can you guess who? Brian sent Kim a cute bathroom selfie. But take a closer look at his shelf. He has one male razor and another pink razor, which probably belongs to his girlfriend. So goodbye, Brian. Meanwhile, Kyle took a selfie in his bedroom. Luckily, he left the closet open so we could see his girlfriend's clothes and shoes. So only Harry is a single person, and Kim should give him a chance. Jenny goes for a walk to her favorite park. Suddenly, she gets attacked by a crowd of zombies. Jenny gets terrified and begins to run away. There are three possible routes in front of her, but only one of them will actually take Jenny to a shelter. Can you help her escape? Jenny should choose Route C. Ethan owns a successful flower shop, but today he's very upset. Someone has stolen all the red roses from the storage room. Ethan questions three suspects among his staff. Leah, the chief florist, says, I spent the whole day creating bouquets with pink lilies for a wedding ceremony. Donna, the manager, says, I don't know who stole the roses. I didn't even enter the storage room today. I was consulting our clients all day long. And finally, Mike, the florist assistant, says, Fresh red roses were delivered early in the morning. I brought them to the storage room, and I've never entered it again. Who's lying? Leah. There are no pink lilies in the bouquets that she made. Lauren changes a six-number password on the office door to avoid thefts. She leaves this little clue for all her colleagues. Bagel. Can you guess the correct code? To solve this mystery, we should calculate the number of each given letter in the alphabet. B implies 2, A implies 1, G7, and so on. So the final password is 217512. 
Helen meets a handsome guy at a supermarket. She falls in love at first sight. His name is Robert, and he came here with his sister. Can you guess which one of these ladies is his sister? It's the third woman. She's the only one who's shopping without a separate cart or basket because Robert carries it. The police officer is chasing Kendra who had just robbed a jewelry store. The teenager sneaks into the nearest school and the officer follows her. She notices Kendra's hoodie by one of the doors and enters the classroom. There she sees four students who look like Kendra. Can you decide who's the real robber? This one is Kendra. She has neither books nor pens on her desk. Let's go ahead and take a look at these two pictures. Can you spot ten differences between them? Ready to see the solution? Here are the ten differences. It's a Sunday afternoon. Most people are spending it at the local shopping mall. Nothing usually happens here. But suddenly a man snatches a woman's bag and runs away. The woman calls a security guard and yells, Don't just stand here! Go after him! But the thief has already disappeared into the crowd. Can you help the guard find the thief? He's over here. Sam gets promoted and throws a fancy party for his best friends. Josh, Kate, Brad, Bill, and Holly. Everything goes great. But the next morning, Sam finds out that someone broke into his safe and stole his family treasure, a golden egg. Sam questions his friends, but each swears to have nothing to do with the theft. The police officer looks through the pictures that Sam took yesterday. After comparing these two shots, he spots the thief. What about you? Yesterday, Holly was wearing a classy hat. In the first picture, the hat is pressed close to her head. And on the second one, the very same hat is much taller. That's because she hid the golden egg inside it. Violet returns from a business trip. She enters her office and sees a beautiful gift basket on her table. There's a love note from a secret admirer attached to the package. Violet gets very curious. She figures out three suspects and asks them just one question. Did you send me the gift basket? Liam replies, Nope, I would have sent you sunflowers instead. I know you love them. Jason says, I overslept today, and I've just arrived at the office, so I wouldn't have had time to prepare a surprise for you. And Kenny says, I didn't send the basket, but when I entered your room in the morning to put some documents on your desk, the basket was already there. Who's the secret admirer? The love note is written on a pink sticker. Kenny has similar sticker notes in his workspace, and his handwriting is very similar to the love note. Busted. Tyler receives a message from his new girlfriend, Kitty. She invites him over for dinner. Tyler has never been to her house yet. He takes his scooter and hits the road right away. But unfortunately, he gets lost on the way. His navigator breaks down and shows him three confusing routes. Can you guess what route leads to Kitty's house? Tyler should take the first route. Alex is heading to a family dinner, but he's really broke and he only has eight chocolates. He needs to divide them equally between his three sisters. How many cookies would each sister get? Zero. Alex has chocolates, not cookies. Nellie's father has five daughters. The name of the eldest daughter is April. The second daughter is May. The third one is June. And the fourth daughter's name is July. Can you guess the name of his fifth daughter? No. 
Nelly. A gardening fair takes place in a village. The top five local gardeners show their best flowers. But one of them brought fake plants to prank the villagers. Can you spot the fake? Bumblebees fly around all the plants except for the fourth flower pot. Insects don't get attracted to these roses because they are artificial. Dylan is exploring a remote forest area. Soon he gets lost and has no idea where to go. Luckily he comes across a small cabin in the woods and sees a forester. Dylan. Hello, could you please tell me how I can get to the railway station? Forester. Go down this trail until you reach a crossroads. There, you'll see a rock with signboards. Just remember, the left one lies, and the right one tells the truth. Dylan follows his advice, and soon finds the rock. Can you guess which way he should go to reach the station? Since the left sign is lying, and the right one is the truth, Dylan should walk straight ahead. Claire puts on a classy white suit and goes for a walk. Suddenly a big dog pops out of nowhere and jumps on her. The dog stains Claire's outfit with dirty paws. She gets furious and yells, Whose dog is this? Can you spot the owner of this animal? It's the second lady. She's wearing the same collar as her dog. Hey Sherlock, I've got a job for you. Are you ready to polish your analytical skills? Great. Here you go. Yeah. Once Lily, a real estate agent, was showing a luxurious apartment to a wealthy family. The family liked everything about the apartment, but for one thing, the place had huge floor-to-ceiling windows, and they were worried someone could accidentally break the glass and fall out. Lily really wanted to sell that expensive apartment. That's why she decided to prove that the glass was unbreakable. She ran up to the window and hit it at full speed. The glass indeed didn't break. But Lily fell out of the window and was rushed to a hospital. How could it happen? The glass didn't break. It simply popped out of its frame. One day, Detective Morris decided to have a walk in the park. In the middle of his stroll, he got a call from his assistant. It turned out that a huge pile of plastic on the outskirts of the city had disappeared overnight. The detective rushed there, and guess what? The information was true. But the most bizarre thing? There were no tire tracks or any other marks around the place. But then, how could the thief transport so much plastic without using a vehicle? Suddenly, Detective Morris noticed some weird footmarks. Can you help the man understand who they belong to? Those are definitely not human footprints. They might belong to an animal or some other creature. The case is getting weirder by the minute. Detective Morris was wandering around the city for hours looking for clues. Soon his assistant informed him about the disappearance of yet another pile of plastic. At the crime scene, the detective found the same footmarks. The expert he had asked to examine the photos and samples replied that the footprints didn't match any other in her extensive database. She even suggested that they could belong to... an alien. But why would aliens need our plastic? Morris decided to prevent the next crime. He went to the outskirts of the city again and spotted two piles of garbage. Look at them attentively. Which one might aliens want to steal? They will definitely go for the pile on the left. There's too much stuff made of iron in the right pile, but aliens are after plastic, so pile on the left it is. Detective Morris decided to catch the aliens red-handed. In an hour or so, the man noticed a spaceship landing not far from the piles of trash. An alien climbed out of the spaceship and transported the pile that contained plastic into the ship. Detective Morris was shocked, but there was no time for panicking. 
A small door was open in the side of the spaceship. He sneaked inside. He only had some time to look around when a siren started blaring. Oh no, are they gonna take off? The man rushed back to the door, but it was already locked. Luckily, Morris noticed a math equation on the door. It looked as if it was made out of matchsticks. Five plus seven equals two. But the answer was wrong. By trial and error, the detective understood he could only move one matchstick to make the equation correct. How can he do it? Detective Morris moved this matchstick and got 9 minus 7 equals 2. The door opened and the man ran for his life. But the main question remained unanswered. Why did aliens need our plastic? Write your ideas in the comments below. Now look at these animals on the screen. A cat, a camel, a cheetah, a chicken, a crocodile, and a pig. Which animal doesn't belong here? The pig is the odd one out. It's the only animal whose name doesn't start with the letter C. Did you get it? Nice job. Look at these six glasses. The first three are filled with water, while the other three are empty. How can you arrange them so that they alternate in a full, empty, full pattern if you can only move one glass? Pick up the second glass and pour the water into the fifth one. Here you go. Now you have seven guests at your birthday party. And your task is to figure out how to divide your very round birthday cake into eight equal pieces by making only three cuts. First of all, you need to cut your cake vertically in the middle of the cake to divide it into two equal pieces. Repeat the same process, but this time, make a horizontal cut. Now you've got four slices. And the final third cut should go laterally across the cake. Voila! You've got eight equal slices. Look at these bottom lines and try to figure out which of them is the continuation of the top one. It's this line on the left, see? You've been kidnapped by an insane scientist who's going to test his new protective cream on you. After covering you with this lotion, which you absolutely don't trust, he offers you to choose one of the three containers he'll then throw you in. One of the containers is filled with radioactive waste. In the second container, there is an acid that can eat even through metal. And the third one is filled with lava from the largest volcano on Earth that erupted a year ago. Which container should you choose? Pick the container with lava. If the volcano erupted a year ago, the lava must be already solid. Look at these prisoners. Can you figure out who came from the future? It's the guy in the middle. Unlike the other two men who are dressed like people were in the past, he's wearing modern clothes and cool sneakers. A terrible virus broke free from a laboratory, and now all animals and plants on Earth are mutating at a horrifying speed. Uh oh. You've been trying to find the solution, but instead got trapped in the laboratory where it had all started. There are three doors you can escape through, but behind the first one, there is a bunch of aggressive flesh-eating cacti. The second door hides hundreds of venomous bees, and the third door prevents an attack of fire-spitting dragon-like monsters. Which door can lead you to freedom? You can get out of there alive if you choose the first door. Even though the cacti eat flesh, they're still plants and can't move. So you can easily get around them. You're trapped in a room that's steadily getting filled with water coming from a tap in the wall. There are no windows in the room and the door is blocked. You have a mop and a big bucket. What can you do to survive? Yep, you don't have any options in this riddle, so... Think of your own way to get out of this situation.
your chances to stay alive are much higher than you might think. Just turn off the tap. Nathan came to visit his friend Zachary, who worked in a museum. Look what I've got. A priceless manuscript that was written more than a thousand years ago. Zachary looked through the manuscript and realized his friend had been fooled. Does anything in this text strike you as strange? King Alfred V ruled the country from 1290 to 1320 before Common Era. If we talk about the dates before the Common Era, they should be in reverse order. The original text would read, King Alfred V ruled the country from 1320 to 1290 before Common Era. A villain has caught you, and now he lets you choose in which cage he will keep you. You can get out of the cage only through the lid in its ceiling. But on top of the first cage, there is a nest of venomous snakes. Boiling water is on top of the second cage. And on top of the third cage, there is a hungry lion. Which cage should you pick to be able to escape when the villain falls asleep? Choose the second cage because the water will eventually evaporate and you'll get out of the cage without problems. You're locked in a small room without windows and just one door. To get out of there, you need to crack this riddle. One, two, three equals five. Three, two, one equals nine. Two, one, one equals four. One, one, two equals three. One, three, two equals... How fast can you get out of the locked room? The answer lies in the addition of the second and third digits and the multiplication of the sum by the first digit. Let's take the first equation. 1, 2, 3 equals 5. 2 plus 3 equals 5. 1 times 5 is 5. Let's make sure. 3, 2, 1 equals 9. 2 plus 1 equals 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Then the answer we need is again 5. 3 plus 2 equals 5. 1 times 5 is 5. Now, let's check if you can think outside the box. A few Rebus puzzles will do the job. Yeah. Try to figure out this one. Way. Progress. It means progress underway. How about this one? Noon. Good. It's good afternoon. Pay attention to the arrangement of the letters. C. L. E. A. N. Do you think you can figure it out? It means clean up. What word or phrase can you see here? Give, 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 give. It stands for forgive. Concentrate. I believe you can crack this puzzle. 1N, 3N, 5N, 7N. This rebus hides odds and ends. Try to figure out this one. Stay 4NCE. It's for instance. Great job! Mr. Carter, a rich man who collected antiques, asked Detective Morris to visit him. When the detective arrived, the collector said, I've just got a precious statuette but I need to go away on business for a week, and I'm afraid someone will break into my house. Of course, the statuette is insured, but still. Detective Morris had some other urgent things to do, but he promised to come back in the evening to figure out the solution. But when he arrived several hours later, Mr. Carter was in despair. I drove my sister to the doctor and was away for an hour or so. But when I came back, the statuette was gone. Detective Morris didn't believe the collector. Why?
When he left the house in the afternoon, he noticed an apple lying in front of the left part of the gate. It's still there. But for a car to drive through, both parts of the gate have to be open. This means that Mr. Carter lied about leaving his home by car. Several gold bullion bars were stolen from a bank. The police had a few suspects. But when they arrived at the main suspect's house, they realized they had forgotten to bring a warrant. The man told them he wasn't going to allow them to search his house. Come back with the warrant and we'll talk. An hour later, the police officers came back with the needed documents. They thoroughly searched the house and the garden, but didn't find the gold. Suddenly, one of the officers exclaimed, I know where he hid the gold. Have you figured it out too? The gold is in the swimming pool. When the police visited the man for the first time, the level of water in it was much lower. A very famous painting disappeared from a museum. Later, the police managed to find it. But there was a problem. They found not one, uh -oh. but three paintings. Only one of them is original. The others are just copies. Can you help the police figure out which the original painting is? It's the one with the brown frame. Take a look. All frames in the museum are made in the same style. You've got accepted to the best school of witchcraft and wizardry. One of the classes you have to attend is about transforming into animals. There are three professors who teach this class. Each of them specializes in transforming into a certain animal. Look at your professors and try to figure out what kind of uh -oh. animal each of them turns into. Have you noticed that the first professor has a forked tongue? He must transform into a snake. The second professor has a lion's tail. It must be the animal she transforms into. And the third professor has bear claws. He must turn into a grizzly bear. Jenny and Ben were about to get married. They wanted to book a hotel for their wedding ceremony in the party. So they went to a wedding planner to look at some options. She told them only three hotels were available for the day they wanted and showed them the pictures. Which one should they choose? Take a closer look at the third floor windows of the first hotel. In the last window on the right, there's a creepy shadow of a monster that appears and disappears. Five stars or not, no one would like to get married in a haunted place unless they're an Adams family member. In the third hotel, only has two stars. It probably doesn't have the facilities to host a wedding, so the best choice is the second hotel. Great choice, the wedding planner said, and you're in luck because they actually have a great discount offer. If you can answer this riddle correctly, you won't have to pay for the ballroom rental. Here it is. Those who have it, do not say it. Those who take it, do not know it. Those who know it, do not want it. What is it? Do you know the answer? It's fake money! The next day, Ben and Jenny went to the hotel to pick the best ballroom for their party. The hotel manager took them to three different rooms where they could host everything from the ceremony itself to the dinner and after party. Which one should they pick? Do you see a little mouse hole in the corner of the first ballroom? The couple wouldn't want such uninvited guests at their party. As for the second ballroom, the chandelier looks like it might fall down any minute. Not the safest option so they should pick the third ballroom. It was time for Ben and Jenny to pick the wedding menu. Since they were not paying for the venue, they wanted to spare no expense in serving food that the guests would never forget. That's why they called three different Michelin star chefs. Each of them prepared a different dish and presented them for a tasting. Which chef, and therefore, which dish should they go for?
Even though the dish the second chef made looks perfectly fine, do you see a rat's tail hanging from his chef's hat? There must be some ratatouille situation going on there. So that's a pass. The third dish looks like spaghetti, right? Well, look again. Those are actually very thin snakes. Exotic flavors might not be the best option, so they better go with the classical burger that the first chef made. Before they made their wedding vows, Jenny had to say yes to a dress. So, she went to a couture store to check their wedding gown collection. She explained to the designer the style of the dress she wanted for her ceremony. The designer said he had just the perfect gown for her and would bring it to her if she answered his riddle correctly. He asked, if a gown takes an hour to dry, how many hours will it take six dresses to dry? It'll still take one hour because they'll all dry at the same time. Ben had one last item to buy on his wedding shopping list, and it was what fastens two people yet touches only one. Can you figure out what it is? It's a wedding ring, of course. Ben headed to a jewelry store to get something blue for his bride. The store owner showed him three different wedding rings with blue gemstones. Which one should he buy? The second ring has an engraving inside, so it must have belonged to someone else before. The gemstone on the third ring has a tiny crack in it. That can only mean it's made of glass or even plastic. So, Ben should buy the first ring with a sapphire. Next, Ben and Jenny were going to send out invitations. One print shop offered them three different versions of invitations. Which one should they choose? Do you remember the name of the hotel they booked? It was Sunrise Lodge, but the first invitation says Sunset Lodge, so this one won't do. And on the third invitation, their names are printed as Benny and Jen. That's not our couple, so they should choose the second invitation. Before the wedding, three of their friends paid them a visit. One of them brought a painting as a wedding gift, but all three claimed that they were the artist who had created it. Two of them must be lying. Can you figure out who the actual artist is? Take a look at the signature on the painting. It says, Denise. Now look at the third friend's necklace. It has the letter D. So she must be Denise, the artist who painted the painting. It was finally the day of the wedding, and Ben and Jenny's guests started to arrive. However, the hotel security spotted three suspicious-looking people who could be uninvited. Take a look at these three guys. Can you tell which one is not supposed to be at the wedding? Do you see the hotel wristbands that say Ben and Jenny that the second and the third guys are wearing? That can only mean they are actually invited. So it's the first guy who's crushing the wedding. Sorry, dude, no free drinks for you. After the vows were exchanged, it was time to party. As Ben and Jenny were dancing, someone spilled their drink on Jenny's dress, but no one saw who it was. Jenny spotted three people who could have done it. Take a look at them. Can you tell who ruined her dress? The first guy has spots on his shirt that resemble stains from the spilled drink, but they are actually part of the pattern, so it can't be him. The third lady looks clean, but the hem of the second lady's skirt looks dirty, so it must be her who did it. After the ceremony ended, Ben and Jenny wanted to take a photo to capture the moment forever. But take a look at it, there's something strange about it. Can you spot what it is?
Can you see a woman hiding behind the trees watching them? She is wearing a witch hat, but it's a wedding ceremony and not a costume party. Creepy. Right before leaving, Jenny suddenly vanished. Then the witch suddenly appeared in front of Ben and said, You may only kiss the bride if you figure out with whom you really tied the knot. Ha <laughs> ha! Then two Jennies appeared in front of Ben. Can you tell which one is his real wife? Remember the wedding photo? The Jenny on the left is the real one because her tattoo is on the same side as in the photo. Now that Ben and Jenny's wedding was over, phew, it was time for them to pick a honeymoon destination. They went to a travel agency to book a tour. The travel agent offered them three different holiday destinations, Ibiza, Cannes, and the Caribbeans. Which one should they go to? Have you noticed the weather forecast on TV in the office? It states that the weather in Ibiza is going to be windy in the upcoming days, and in Cannes, it's going to be rainy, so they should pick the Caribbeans and enjoy the sun. The travel agent said she could upgrade their plane tickets to business class for free. It would be her wedding gift to them. But they had to crack this riddle. What can travel around the world while staying in a corner? It's a stamp. Sarah accidentally pulled a lever in a science lab and set free a group of mutant zombies. The four humans left in the lab needed to escape before the zombies caught up. To do so, they needed to cross an old rope bridge hanging over a massive gorge. According to the professor's calculations, the zombies would catch up with the lab team in 17 minutes. They needed to get everyone across the bridge before that. Sarah was the fastest one in the group. She could cross the bridge in one minute. The lab assistant, Dawn, could cross it in two minutes. But the janitor and the professor were way slower. The first needed five minutes, and the second needed ten minutes to get to the other side. They also only had one lantern left. How could they arrive at the other side safely if the bridge could only hold two people at a time and each group needed to carry the lantern to illuminate the way? Here's how it works. Sarah and Dawn cross the bridge first, carrying the lantern. It takes them two minutes. Sarah, the quickest, runs back with the lantern. Then, the professor and the janitor cross the bridge together. It takes them 10 minutes. In total, it takes 13 minutes. Dawn grabs the lantern from them and dashes across the bridge to help Sarah get across. With two minutes left on the clock, Sarah and Dawn get safely to the other side just in time to cut the rope and save their lives. Helena finally got herself a new guitar. She wanted to start playing it right away, but she had to go to school. She locked the instrument in her room and left. When she got home that evening, the guitar was gone. She knew it must have been one of her family members as they were always playing pranks on each other. So she questioned each of them. Helena's mother said she hadn't even seen the guitar the girl had bought. Her dad said he'd seen it when he'd passed by Helena's room, but swore he hadn't done anything to it. Her brother said he hadn't gone upstairs the whole day, so he hadn't seen the guitar either. Helena solved the mystery right away. Can you figure it out? Her dad is lying. He said he'd seen the guitar when passing by her room, but that would be impossible. Helena locked the door on the way out. John, Carl, and Ben are sitting on a park bench. One of them arranged to meet his two sisters. He promised them he would take them on a stroll in the park. Can you tell which guy it is? It's Ben. Look at his wrist. He's wearing two bracelets. 
probably made by his younger sisters. Josh was walking in a forest at night and came across an old castle. He was curious, so he found a way to sneak in and started walking down a corridor. Pretty soon, he met three cloaked figures. When Josh asked them who they were, they said they were two werewolves and one vampire. The trio told Josh that he had made a bad choice coming inside the castle. They said they wouldn't leave him unless Josh outsmarted them. Josh had to guess who the vampire was. According to the rules, he was only allowed to ask each of them the same question, and the question couldn't be, are you a vampire? After a few minutes of thinking, Josh asked, what's your eye color? He guessed who the vampire was and was allowed to leave the castle. Why did he ask that? And how did that question help him? Vampires don't reflect in mirrors, and they don't show up in photos. The vampire probably wouldn't know their eye color. One afternoon, four friends met up for coffee. Someone asked them how old they were, and they answered with a riddle. They said Mia was three times older than Anna, but three years ago, Anna was younger than Claudia is now, and Olivia is twice as old as Anna. So, can you put the girls in order according to their age? The correct order is Mia, Olivia, Anna, and Claudia. Mary's birthday was coming up, and she decided to treat herself to a relaxing day at the spa. During the massage, Mary dozed off. When she woke up, the money was missing from her purse. There were three suspects. The cashier, Erica, claimed that she'd been having lunch at the back. Catherine, the masseuse, said, I went to the back of the store to get some extra oil. Monica, a customer, said she hadn't seen anything and had just been waiting for her turn. What do you say, Sherlock? Who did it? The culprit is Catherine, the masseuse. She must have waited for Mary to fall asleep and then took her things. Look at the stash of money hidden behind the oils. Susanna was walking down the street when she saw a small dog. It looked as if the dog had just run away, so she picked it up and started searching for its owner. She walked into an office building. There were three people there. Susanna knew immediately who the dog's owner was. How did she figure it out? Look at the guy in the middle. He's sitting on a dog's leash. You've just come back from a long trip. You had to get a new suitcase to store all the things you bought. But after arriving home, you realize you've forgotten the code you need to open the suitcase. Luckily, you left yourself a note on your cell phone that can help you decipher the code on the lock. 682. One digit is correct and in the right place. 614. One digit is correct, but in the wrong place. 206. Two digits are correct, but in the wrong place. 768. All digits are wrong. 380. One digit is right, but in the wrong place. What's the three-digit code? Zero, four, two. One morning, Detective Smith arrived at the jail where three men had escaped from their cells. The prisoners could neither see nor talk to each other. But they managed to organize their escape together. They visited the same shower room, but only one person was allowed to come in at a time. How did they manage to communicate? They wrote messages to one another on the bathroom mirror, used the steam to read them, and planned their escape together. 
On a Sunday morning, seven friends went to the mall. Esme, Evelyn, and Elise grabbed a cup of coffee each, while Ava, Ella, and Emma decided to drink some refreshing soda. Can you figure out if Esther chose to drink coffee or soda? Esther is drinking coffee. The secret to figuring out the answer is in the girls' names. Esme, Evelyn, Elise, and Esther all have two-letter E's in their names. In the afternoon, three people visited Tessa's clothing store. These three people were the only customers she had that day. The first person bought a belt and a purse. The second person bought a dress. And the third customer got a hat. One of them was a criminal, and Tessa reported them to the police immediately. Who was the criminal, and how did Tessa know? The third person gave her a $1,000 bill, but such bills don't exist. At 11 a.m., Amy got a call from her boss, Tom. He was in distress because a very important document had disappeared from his office. It had been on the desk the evening before, but nowhere to be found in the morning. Amy immediately went there to question the employees. She soon had three suspects. Elijah said he had spent the previous evening in the movies. Mason took his girlfriend to dinner. And Evelyn visited an art gallery. It didn't take Amy long to understand who was lying. Can you figure it out? It was Elijah. Take a close look at his ticket. It isn't torn, which means he didn't really go to the movies. Sarah was in her hotel room when she heard a knock on the door. When she looked through the people, she saw a man standing outside. Sorry for bothering you. I'm the hotel manager. He said, Our database has crashed and I need to recheck some information. Sarah said she would be back in a moment, got away from the door and called the hotel security. She said there is a man trying to rob her. How did she know? Look at the man's name tag. It's a female name. He's not the real hotel manager. When Anna got to school, she noticed that her friend Joan was very upset. It was just the beginning of the day, but someone had already stolen her backpack. Joan left the classroom to go to the bathroom, and at that moment, someone must have got inside and stolen her things. Anna started her own investigation. Jenna from the robotics lab said she'd been fixing a robot that morning. Kate from the cheerleading squad had just begun her practice. And James said he'd spent three hours trying to solve a math problem and was now exhausted. Anna knew right away who had taken the backpack. Can you figure it out? It was James. The school day had just started. How could he have been there for three hours already? On a beautiful morning, Michael and Christina went on a hike. At some point, they saw a river they had to cross. Both of them needed to get to the other side. However, the boat could only make one trip back and forth and take one of them at a time. Still, both of them managed to get across. How? That's easy. They both went on a hike on the same day, but they weren't together, so they arrived at the river at the same time. But they were on the opposite banks, so after the boat took Christina to the other side of the river, Michael managed to get to the opposite bank too. At a party, there were nine candies in a box. Nine people took nine candies, but one candy was still in the box. How could that be possible? The last person took the candy that was still in the box. When the day after tomorrow becomes yesterday, 
then today will be as far from Sunday as the day it was today when the day before yesterday was tomorrow. Which day is it? It's Sunday. Look, the day after tomorrow becomes yesterday on Wednesday. The day before yesterday was tomorrow on Thursday. And Wednesday and Thursday are equally far from Sunday. Susanna was walking down the street when she saw a dog. It looked like the dog had just run away, so she picked it up and started searching for its owner. She walked into a co-working space. There were three people there. Susanna knew immediately who the owner was. How did she figure it out? Look at the guy in the middle. He's sitting on top of a dog leash. It was Brian's birthday, and he organized a game for his friends. He placed two cards, one yellow and one red, inside a box. The rule said that if a person picked the red card, they would win $7,000. But if they picked the yellow card, they would have to pay $700. Nobody knew that Brian had lied. He'd put two yellow cards inside the box instead of one red and one yellow. Brian's friend Sandra watched her friends lose the game one by one. But when it was Sandra's turn, she won $7,000. How? When it was her turn, she picked one of the yellow cards, not showing it to anyone. Then she picked the remaining card, which was also yellow, and showed it to her friends. Brian had to admit that the first card she'd drawn and hidden was red. Otherwise, all his friends would know he was a liar. Way to go, Sandra. Amy has to escape from a high-security room, but to do so, she has to solve a riddle. There are two strings in the room, and the only information she has is that each string takes exactly one hour to burn. She needs to time exactly 45 minutes with the help of the strings. How can she do it? Amy should light both ends of the first string and one end of the second string. In 30 minutes, the first string will burn completely since it'll burn twice faster with both ends on fire. Then, she should light the second end of the second string. At that time, the second string will have 30 minutes left to burn. But by lighting its other end, Amy will make it burn in 15 minutes. Voila! 45 minutes measured. On January 1st, Devin called the police to report a crime. He said he'd gone to his neighbor's New Year's Eve party the night before. And while he was away, someone broke into his house and stole his laptop and other valuables. When the police asked about the party, Devin said it had been great. There was good food and string lights were shining brightly and beautifully. Devin added that his neighbor could have been the one to steal his things. Maybe he snuck inside the house when Devin was at his place, having fun. The police officer went to interrogate Devin's neighbor, Tom. But as soon as Tom opened the door, the officer knew he wasn't guilty. Devin was lying. How did he understand this? Look at the string lights on the tree. They're missing three bulbs. It means they couldn't be working the night before. Devin is lying. Matthew was on an expedition to the South Pole. He had been exploring the area for days when a storm began. Looking for shelter, he managed to find two caves. In the first cave, there was a very hungry-looking polar bear. In the second cave, the air was filled with toxic gas. Which cave should he choose? The first cave. Polar bears don't live at the South Pole. Jerry has an apple tree. The number of apples on his tree doubles every week. 30 weeks later, the tree is completely covered in fruit. Can you guess how many weeks the tree will need to become covered in oranges? Oranges don't grow on apple trees, but if I asked you about apples, the answer would be 29 weeks because, as we know, the number of apples doubles every week. Nobody has ever walked this way. What way is it?
the Milky Way. Dave was held in a 150-foot high tower of an ancient castle. In his cell, there was nothing other than a pair of scissors and a 75-foot long rope. Despite this, when the guards came to check on him the next morning, they saw he had managed to escape. How did he do it? He cut the rope in the middle, but rather than cutting it across, he cut it along. Then he tied both pieces of the rope together and safely got down to the ground. Genius, huh? On the outskirts of the town, there was a haunted house. A group of friends decided to check it out. They went there at night, but as soon as they got there, one of the friends, John, refused to go inside and tried to stop the others. But they just laughed at him and went inside, leaving him behind. There were several terrible crashing sounds coming from the house. And then everything went still. John never saw his friends again. How did John understand that there was something seriously wrong with the house? John was very attentive. He noticed that there were lots of footprints leading towards the house, but none going away. Rachel was in her office when security called her, saying there was a robber in the building and he was trying to escape. She ran to the elevators to get outside. But two elevators arrived at the same time. In each of them, there was a man that looked suspicious and could be the robber. How can Rachel understand which elevator is safe to take? The one that's going up. If the robber is trying to get out of the building, his elevator will be going down. So Rachel should take the one going up. Hey Sherlocks, I really need your help here. So take out your magnifying glasses and join me on this detective chase. Yeah. Look at this image. What's wrong here? These guys seem to be playing tennis, but they're using a tiny football. Now how about these people? One of them is from the future. Can you figure out who it is? Be very attentive. Right, it's this guy. He's got a smartphone in his pocket. This looks like a regular picnic in the park, but one of these people is a time traveler. Who is it? It's the guy with a USB port in his arm. A sailor has a piece of fabric that is 16 feet long. He cuts two feet of this fabric per day. How many days will he need to cut the whole cloth? Your first answer might have been eight days, but in fact, the sailor will only need seven days. The last remaining piece of fabric will be two feet long, and the sailor won't need to cut it. Adam's car has broken down right in the middle of a deserted forest road. But the worst thing? It's winter. Snow drifts are huge, and the wind is freezing cold. Adam has to get to the nearest town, and fast. But if he follows the first path, he'll have to deal with hungry wolves. The second one goes through an area inhabited by bears. And if he takes the third road, he'll have to cross a river covered with thin ice. Which is the safest way? Adam should sneak through the bear's territory. These animals sleep in winter. Look at this picture. Which cage, in your opinion, is the safest? It's the last one. Even though a scorpion sting is painful, it's rarely life-threatening. The next tricky brain teaser for you. 
Can you figure out who has stolen her computer? It's definitely the girl on the right. Look at the strange shape her hoodie has taken. One of these girls is a wanted criminal. But which one? It's the one with dark hair. She has the same mole as the girl in the photo. Now there is something terribly wrong in this image. Can you figure out what it is? Look at that snowdrift near the cactus on the right. It's a desert. What is a snowdrift doing there? Look at these people and try to figure out who will divorce soon. Most likely, it will be the couple on the right. Have you noticed that the woman has secretly given a note with her phone number to the bartender? After a natural disaster, there was a blackout in Sam's town. Some criminals used darkness to kidnap the guy for ransom. The building where he was kept had three doors. Sam could use one of them to escape. But the first door hid a trap that would crush anyone as soon as they entered. Behind the second door, there were chainsaws that could cut anything into pieces in no time. The flesh-eating acid was bubbling behind the third door. Which door should Sam choose? Chainsaws can't harm the guy because there's no electricity in the town, remember? Molly invites her best friends over for dinner. Rose, Bianca, Tom, and Stan. Everything goes great. But in the middle of the night, Molly notices that one of her books is missing. This item is very special. Molly hides all her cash in this book, and she has never told anyone about it. Molly questions her friends, but each swears to have nothing to do with the theft. Can you help Molly spot the thief? It's Tom. He's sitting on the stolen book. Detective Tina has received multiple cyber fraud reports this week. People complain that all the money went missing from their bank accounts. Detective Tina heads out to investigate this case. She meets with three robbed witnesses and asks them to show her their phones. She expects to find some kind of bug or an app. What do they have in common? All of them have the same app. Bella is visiting India. She leaves her bags in the hotel and goes to explore the local market. Suddenly, a stranger approaches her and offers to buy some gifts. Madame, I inherited these treasures from my ancestors. They're thousands of years old. Bella gets very excited. She loves rare souvenirs. Bella studies these items carefully and gets furious. You're a fraud! How did she know? Take a look at this statue. He's wearing headphones. This golden dish has an engraving, made in 2002. So it can't be thousands of years old either. And now, take a closer look at the necklace. It consists of US one-cent coins. Back then, no one knew what they looked like. Chelsea is riding a scooter in her favorite park. Suddenly, someone throws an apple at her back and she falls. Chelsea looks around and finds three suspects. She decides to question them. Glenda says, I was just feeding this cute little squirrel and taking pictures. Brittany says, I just sunbathed on the grass and read a book. I didn't even look your way. And Sergey says, I filmed a podcast for my followers, so I didn't look around. Maybe the apple just fell from this tree by accident. One of them is guilty. Can you guess who?
Chelsea got hit by a red apple with a yellow price tag. But the apple tree, mentioned by Sergey, only has green apples. Meanwhile, Brittany has a bunch of red apples in her bag. And they have similar yellow tags. Uh-oh, busted. Will goes to the restaurant with his friends, Mike, Crystal, and Alex. He orders his favorite cheesecake. He grabs and eats one strawberry from the top of the cake and then remembers, Oh no, I didn't wash my hands. Can you guys please look after my dessert? After a while, he returns and finds out that his plate is missing. Will questions his friends. Mike says, Sorry, I received an urgent call from work and went outside. Crystal said, Your cake looks so delicious that I ordered my own. I didn't see what happened because I also went to wash my hands. And Alex says, Sorry, I left the table to get this lady's number. I think she's my soulmate. Who took Will's cake? Take a look at Crystal's plate. The very same strawberry that Will took from his cake is missing. So it's probably his dessert and Crystal is a liar. Someone drew a pentagram on the floor in the principal's office. Can you guess who tried to curse him? It's the janitor. There's a pain stain on his uniform, and similar symbols can be found on his cap. Daniel and Cherry have been talking on the phone for a while. Today, they decided to go for a coffee. This is the first time they're going to meet in person, and they haven't seen any pictures of each other. Cherry texts Daniel, I will wear a pair of pink hair clips. When Daniel arrives at the coffee shop, he sees three ladies, and surprisingly, all of them are wearing pink hair clips. Can you help Daniel find his date? Take a look at the first table carefully. There are two coffee mugs. This means that this lady is already with someone. The lady sitting at the second table is already enjoying her coffee and a book. Clearly, she's not here for a date. And the third lady is wearing a beautiful dress and her table is empty. Therefore, she's Cherry. Cherry's ex-boyfriend, Drake, is a powerful magician. He doesn't want to let her go, so he kidnaps Cherry and locks her on top of a high tower. With only one window and no doors at all. Also, Drake sets a magic fire around the tower for extra protection and leaves. Cherry realizes that she has little time to escape. She looks around and sees three magic potions. The bottles are labeled. One would give her incredible physical strength. The other one would turn Cherry into a vampire. And the third one would let her summon any animal. Which potion should she use? Even if Cherry destroys the tower, she can do nothing with the magic fire. And no animal can help her escape. But if she becomes a vampire, she'll be able to turn into a bat and fly away. Cherry escapes and finds herself in an enchanted forest. Can you find four magical creatures here? Take a look at this cave. There's a troll hiding inside. Also, there are two pixies sitting on the flowers. And this tree is a wood goblin. Cherry goes ahead and finds a road sign. There are three routes leading to the nearest village. An immortal fire-breathing dragon is guarding the first path. The second route lies through the lands of a witch. She hates men and turns every guy who dares to enter her land into a stone statue. And the third path is a habitat for leopards. Can you help Cherry choose the best route? The second option sounds good. Cherry is a woman, so the witch has no reason to turn her into a statue. Because she only hates men. 
Cherry asks the witch to help her find the village. The witch offers a deal. If you crack my pattern riddle, I'll tell you. But if not, you'll be my servant forever. Cherry had nothing to do but agree. You can have pepper, but not salt. You can have beef, but not chicken. Carrots, broccoli, and cabbage. But no potato in any form. Oh, and you have to eat with a spoon. Can you help Cherry crack the pattern? She's only allowed items containing two of the same letters in a row. The witch helps Cherry find a road. Three drivers stop and offer a ride to the village. Can you help Cherry choose the safest option? There's a zombie hiding in the back of the first car. And there are no passenger seats in the third car. Although the second car's windshield is cracked, it's still the best choice. Liza was a millionaire's daughter. She was fed up with her father trying to control her life. So she decided to run away from home. She took some money and the most discreet car she could find in the garage and left. The girl knew her father would send his people to bring her back. That's why she never stayed in one hotel for more than one night. One day, she found herself in a small town. It was getting dark, and she had no choice but to stop at the first hotel she saw. The receptionist said her room number was 710 and offered to show her where it was. Liza immediately grabbed her bag, ran out of the hotel, jumped in the car, and sped away. Why? The first digit of a hotel room number usually means the floor it's on. Room 710 is supposed to be on the seventh floor. But the hotel has only two floors. This must be a trap. A tourist who didn't speak English came up to the ticket counter at a New York subway station. One ticket cost 50 cents, and the man handed the ticketing clerk one dollar. The woman gave the tourist two tickets without even asking how many he needed. How did she know? The tourist gave her four quarters, and she immediately realized that if he needed just one ticket, he would have just given her two quarters. Ice melts when you heat it, but if you heat me, I'll become solid. Can you figure out what I am? I'm an egg. I'm weightless, but you can see me. And if you put me in a water bottle, it will become much lighter. What am I? Right you are. I'm a hole. After having had a fight with a powerful wizard, Louisa found herself trapped in a medieval castle, far away from civilization. She couldn't escape. Jumping out of the window was out of the question because it was too high above the ground. And the only tree growing next to that window wasn't sturdy enough for the girl to use it to climb down. At the same time, in the room where Luisa was locked, there were three doors. One of them could lead the girl to freedom, but behind the first door, a fire was raging. The second door held back hundreds of venomous snakes. And behind the third door, there was a maze filled with animal traps. Which door should Louisa choose to escape? Louisa should break off a tree branch, turn it into a torch by lighting it in the first room, and then going through the maze. It won't be dark anymore, and the girl will easily avoid the traps. Now, your task is to crack a few Rebus puzzles. Be very attentive and try to think outside yeah. the box. What does this mean? Right, that's Big Sister. How about this Rebus puzzle?
The correct answer is right between the eyes. Look at this one. That's good afternoon. What can you fill if your hands are empty? Well, this is confusing. How can I fill anything if there's nothing in my hands? You'll probably be able to figure it out. And the correct answer is gloves or mittens if that's what you prefer. Mr. Wilson's company had some financial problems. One day, the man called the police. He said someone had broken into his office. They stole my safe with all the money I had. The police officers who came to investigate this case asked the man why he was so sure that there had been several thieves. Well, my safe was too heavy for one person to carry. The police instantly realized Mr. Wilson was lying. How? If the safe had been indeed so heavy, it would have left some dents on the carpet. But the floor covering is perfectly smooth. Detective Martin was choosing a diamond ring for his fiancée when a man in a black mask ran into the jewelry store. He made all the visitors lie on the floor and took the most expensive jewelry and money. After that, Detective Martin saw the man get on a red motorbike and speed away. The detective jumped into his car and set off on a chase. Soon, he came to a crossroads. Where should he go now? Suddenly, Martin saw a car coming from the opposite direction. He asked the driver if he'd seen the red bike. No, I've only seen a silver convertible. Then, the detective saw a gray car approach from the left. The woman inside said she hadn't seen the red bike, but she had seen a yellow bike and a group of cyclists. And the man who appeared from the right told Detective Martin he'd only noticed a large blue truck. Where is the robber? Yeah. The motorbike can only be inside the blue truck. A pop group is traveling by high-speed train. They're going to a big concert in another country. Everything is going great, but suddenly the lights go out. Someone's moving around in the dark and everyone hears a woman screaming. Finally, the lights turn on again, but one of the singers, Kelly, is missing. The local conductor finds her phone on the floor and questions the witnesses. Jill says, I was at the other end of the car, and then it got so dark, I don't know what happened. Sam says, Kelly was next to me, we talked, and then she disappeared. And Paul says, I felt sick, so I sat down and closed my eyes. I heard something, but I didn't see anything. Who's lying? Jill. She said she was at the other end of the car. Then why is her hair clip lying at the crime scene? Can you find 10 differences between these two pictures? Ready to see the answers? Here they are! What about these cute little plants? Can you see 10 differences between the two pictures? Time is up. I'll bet you failed to spot all 10. Here they are.
What about these two images? Can you find 10 differences? Let's take a look at the answer. The police have long tracked Jake. They suspect him to be involved in diamond smuggling, but they don't have any evidence. They decide to thoroughly check his luggage. Jake comes to the airport with a small briefcase. What's suspicious about it? He uses an electric razor. Why does he need any shaving cream? The diamonds must be inside the tube. Billy takes his family to a safari park. Can you spot anything odd? Giraffes don't have horns, and lions don't wear glasses. What about this picture? Can you see what's wrong here? This flamingo is wearing fancy shoes, and the elephant has five legs. Oh my! Can you find the fastest tap by eye? The second one. Let's make the task a little harder. Here's a new set of taps. Can you guess the fastest? The first one. Which runner will score the goal? Only the third runner can make it to the final point. Here's the route he should choose. Can you find these five items in this picture? Here they are. What about this huge pile of things? Can you dig out these five items? Ready to see the answer? Over here. Can you find the right piece? Only the second one fits perfectly. Rob's wife decides to prank him and changes a six-number password on their safe. She leaves a clue so that Rob could crack the code. Can you help him? Take a closer look at the hint. There's an alphabet with four marked letters. But we know that the password consists of six numbers. To crack the code, we need to count each letter's position in the alphabet. A implies 1, E 5, J 10, and M 13. So the final code is 151013. Tilda is cooking a love potion. She found a recipe in an old spell book. But unfortunately, the last three ingredients are encoded. Here's a hint to crack the first one. I can sometimes be a stick, but I don't come from a tree. I can be spread on your toast. I'm a product that's dairy. Any idea what it could be? Butter. Or as they say in Brooklyn, butter. Here's a hint for a second ingredient. I can be small, I can be huge, and very hard to snatch. 
carve me out, put in a candle, and light it with a match. What is it? It's a pumpkin! Hey, even I got that one. And now, let's try to decode the last ingredient. This thing comes as a small grain, but it's neither rice nor sand. It's often used when cooking, so that food doesn't taste bland. What might it be? The last ingredient for Tilda's love potion is NACL. Oops, I meant salt. Lily gets an invitation to a wedding party. She comes along and sees three weird things right away. Can you spot them too? Take a closer look at the bride. There's a zombie hiding under her skirt. Also, there's planet Earth in the sky instead of the moon. And the clock is going counterclockwise. Well, that's all goofed up. Molly is chilling in her bathroom after a long working day. But can you see anything odd here? She's using a burger instead of a regular sponge. You want fries with that? A dog show competition is taking place in the town. A golden retriever named Toby wins gold. But after the contest, a janitor finds Toby lying unconscious backstage. Detective Tina arrives at the crime scene in 15 minutes. She asks the suspects just one question. What were you doing within the last 15 minutes? Harry, the owner of the rival Golden Retriever, says, I was brushing my dog. I wanted him to shine like a diamond at the contest. Sandra, the local photographer, says, I was taking pictures of the dogs and their owners. Mr. Frank, the judge, says, I was talking to the reporters. And the janitor, Frank, says, I found Toby and called 911 right away. And then I just left him with his owner and went to clean the toilets. Who's lying? Harry. Why would he need to prepare his dog's hair? The contest is over. Lisa breaks her nail and goes to a beauty salon to fix it. There, she meets three manicurists. One of them is an imposter. Can you guess who? It's the third lady. She's using a teaspoon instead of the regular manicure tools. Just another ordinary day in the office. But wait a minute. Can you see anything odd? The lamp doesn't have an electric cord. Hmm, what about this picture? Anything weird? This businessman is holding an artist's brush. Kyle is a policeman. He enters the local public laundromat after work. There, he sees a crying woman. She yells, Officer, please help me! Someone stole my clothes! It was my favorite suit! Kyle interrogates three suspects among the clients. Lisa says, I spent the last 30 minutes here, but I always watch movies on my tablet while waiting, so I didn't look around. Ryan says, I just arrived here to wash my own bed sheets. You can check my bags if you don't believe me. And finally, Nina says, I had a video call with my boyfriend while I was waiting for my laundry to dry. I didn't have the chance to look around. Who's lying? Lisa. 
take a closer look. Her tablet is broken and shut down, so she couldn't have been watching a movie. Can you spot any ghosts in this picture? How about over here? What about this area? Can you spot any ghosts? Hello! Peter is a famous travel blogger. He gets an invitation to visit the fanciest secret beach in the world. But the map has a twist. Can you help Peter choose the right route? Only option B will bring him to the final destination. Finally, Cherry finds the village. This place is magical. Many amazing creatures live here. Suddenly, a half-hippo approaches Cherry and yells, Please help me. One of these guys had stolen my clothes. Can you guess who? Take a look at the dog's badge. It says Hippo. So, it was the dog who stole his shirt. Cherry meets the local farmer, Timothy. He used to keep chickens in another country. Things were going well and he made good money. But then he bought a big farm in this village and moved there. Soon, Timothy got to know that floods are very frequent in this area. But he didn't get upset and decided to breed ducks instead of chickens. Why? Ducks can swim, so floods aren't so dangerous for them. Timothy invites Cherry over for dinner at home. But unfortunately, Cherry's ex-boyfriend Drake had already found them. He captures Timothy and Cherry at the farmer's house. Suddenly, the phone rings. Drake allows Timothy to take the phone, but he can't reveal the situation. Otherwise, Drake will use his magic wand to turn them into snakes. So Timothy replies, Hey mom, how can I help you? I'm home and about to go to bed. If it's not an emergency, can I call you later? I'm really sleepy. 30 minutes later, the police arrive, confiscate the magic wand, and rescue the guys. How did Timothy ask for help? He held the mute button saying everything except the words, help, home, emergency, and call. The detective gives Drake a chance to get freedom. He can pass through one of these three doors. Jungles full of dangerous animals are hiding behind the first door. Behind the second door, there's a tank with ice water that is impossible to stand in for even a minute. And there's a giant fire-breathing dino behind the third door. Which door is more or less safe? Drake should pick the third door. Dinos don't breathe fire, and they went extinct millions of years ago. Drake returns to his castle and discovers that someone had broken all the bottles with his precious potions in his lap. Drake gets furious and interrogates his three goblin servants. Willie says, I was cleaning the castle all day long. I didn't even enter your lab today. Tilly says, I was picking roses in the garden in the morning. Then I entered your lab to bring rose petals for your potions. Everything was fine. And Billy says, I was cooking dinner in the kitchen and then I went to the bathroom to take a quick shower. Who's lying? Tilly, he didn't pick the roses. They're still in the garden. Meanwhile, Timothy drives Cherry home. They stop to buy something on the way. Can you guess what exactly by just looking at this image? Key 
kiwi. Then Timothy takes two pictures of Cherry. Can you find 10 differences between them? Here they are. Someone robbed Cherry's house when she was on a picnic on the 4th of July. The detective finds four suspects and questions them about what they were doing that day. Bobby, the fireman, says, I was on duty the day before. I was very tired, so I went sleeping all day long. Nick is a student. He says, I was celebrating Independence Day with my family. Rick, the manager, says, It was a holiday and I was playing games with my roommates. Then we watched TV all night. And Kyle, the postman, says, I was at the post office all day. All my colleagues saw me. The detective identifies the robber immediately. What about you? It was Kyle. He couldn't work at a post office on the 4th of July. It's a public holiday. Cherry receives her first salary and hides the cash in her closet. Cherry's three roommates are not at home at this time. So she just leaves the money and goes to the gym right away. After a while, Cherry returns home and discovers that her money had been stolen from the closet. She starts looking all over the room, but finds no clues. Suddenly, her three roommates enter the room. Cherry asks each of them, Has anyone stolen my money? Bella replies, I was in college all day. I just got home from lunch and I didn't enter this room. Anna says, I came home for lunch as well, but after Bella. I opened the closet door to look for some documents, but there was no money inside. And Megan says, I had no idea that you were hiding cash in the closet. I just returned from work. You should talk to the security guard. Who's the thief? Bella must have concluded that if Cherry is searching this room, money should have been stolen only from here, so she doesn't sound suspicious. But Anna said that she had searched the closet and found no money. Meanwhile, Cherry didn't mention the closet in the first place. Therefore, Anna is the thief. Now Tyler runs an amusement park. He's having a job interview with these three clowns. But only one of them is not dangerous. Can you help Tyler hire the right person? The first clown doesn't cast a shadow, so he's probably a ghost. And the third clown is stealing money from the second clown's pocket, so he's a thief. Therefore, Tyler should hire the second clown. Peter and Holly are having their first date in the amusement park. They decide to ride the Tunnel of Love. At some point, it gets pretty dark inside the tunnel. And after the ride, Peter finds out that his wallet is gone. Tyler calls the police and questions three customers from nearby swan boats. Bella says, I'm sorry, I filmed a video on my phone. I didn't look around. Tim says, no way, bro. My wallet is gone, too. And Lisa replies, in the dark, I felt someone touching my bag. I pushed the attacker away. Can you spot the thief? It's Holly. Take a look at her bag. There are two wallets inside it. And here's one more in her pocket. Tyler receives a curious delivery. It has streets, but no pavement. It has cities, but no buildings. It has forests, but no trees. Also, it has rivers, yet no water. Can you guess what it is? It's a map. There are three bakeries in the park. Wendy has exactly $100 and she needs to buy 100 cupcakes. She must spend the money entirely. Also, Wendy must buy at least one cupcake from each bakery. The first shop is selling each cupcake at 5 cents. The second one is selling them at 1 dollar. 
and the third at $5. How many cupcakes should Wendy buy from each bakery? To fit the budget, Wendy should buy 80 cupcakes from the first shop, one cupcake from the second shop, and 19 cupcakes from the third shop. Brian decides to take a ride on the Ferris wheel. On his way up, someone suddenly throws ice cream right in his face. When the trip is over, he interviews three suspects. Zoe says, I don't eat ice cream, I'm on a sugar-free diet. Peter says, I didn't see anything, bro. I'm terrified of heights, so I kept my eyes closed the whole ride. And Fred says, sorry, I was streaming a video, so I didn't look around. Who is lying? Peter. If he's terribly afraid of heights, why would he ride the Ferris wheel? Brian is wandering around the park. Suddenly, someone approaches him from the back and grabs his phone. The thief is wearing a mask, so Brian can't see his face. The thief runs into a cafe and hides among the customers. Can you help Brian spot the criminal? It's this woman. She's hiding Brian's wallet in the menu. Tyler is walking down the street after a long work day. Suddenly, he pushes this lady. Can you guess why? Tyler saved her from getting hit by a car. Tyler keeps on walking and sees a group of ducks crossing the road. Can you count the exact number of ducks? Sixteen. Tyler enters a jewelry shop where his girlfriend, Mary, works as a saleswoman. Unfortunately, he finds her unconscious on the floor. He calls doctors immediately. They figure out that Mary was poisoned. Tyler questions three witnesses. The cleaning lady says, I was cleaning silver jewelry in the storage room. The guard said, I was having a lunch break outdoors and talking with my friend. And the boss says, I had a business meeting in another part of the city. Can you help Tyler figure out who poisoned Mary? Take a look at the hint that Mary left on the wall. It literally says that the boss did it. A few days later, Mary gets better and decides to prank Tyler. She brings three similar boxes to his house. There are two delicious cheesecakes in two boxes, and the remaining box contains dog food. Let's spin the boxes back and forth. Can you find the pranked box now? Aha! The second one! Tyler gets an urgent call from his assistant. Someone painted graffiti at a vegan restaurant in his park. Tyler interrogates three employees. The cleaner says, I had an urgent call from my mother, so I went outside the restaurant to the backyard. When I returned, the graffiti was already there. The waitress says, I was taking an order. Suddenly, I looked out the window and saw a person in a black hoodie. He dropped a paint can and ran away. And the cook says, I was wearing my earphones and frying chicken wings in the kitchen, so I didn't notice anything suspicious. Who's lying? The cook. It's a vegan restaurant. Why would he fry chicken wings? After getting exposed, the cook pushes Tyler away and escapes from the restaurant. Tyler follows him. The cook hides in a carnival tent. He puts on a costume to blend in with the crowd. Can you help Tyler find him? (laughs) 
There he is. It was raining heavily outside. So his shoes got wet. Tyler is walking around the park and spots four weird details. Can you see them too? This teddy bear has three ears. There's no July 34. There's pink ice cream inside the chocolate ice cream box. And this old lady is carrying a crocodile in a stroller. There are three fortune tellers working in the amusement park. Zelda, Salma, and Freya. One of them is an imposter. Can you decide who? Selma has an earphone in her ear, which probably means that someone is helping her when she tells fate. Later that night, Tyler finds Zelda lying unconscious at her workplace. There's a weird note in her hand. Tyler calls the doctors and the police. He also finds out that Zelda had only five customers that night. Alex, Rick, Emma, Rose, and Zoe. Can you figure out who's guilty? Rose. There's a tricky hint hidden in this note. Q plus 1 is R, N plus 1 is O, R plus 1 is S, and D plus 1 is E. Tyler spends all morning in his office. Then he leaves it for a couple of hours to have lunch with Mary. When Tyler gets back, he finds out that someone had robbed him. How? These six items are missing. Tyler is checking out these clowns' makeup before their performance. Can you spot the odd one out? It's this guy. He's the only one who has eyebrows. What about these houses? Can you find the odd one out? Yup, it's this one. Tyler receives four new tents. Unfortunately, one of them has a slightly different design. Can you spot which one? The second tent doesn't belong here. Tyler wants to improve the scary tunnel. So he gathers all actors playing ghosts and monsters for a brief team building. But there are real monsters and ghosts among Tyler's employees. Can you spot them? This guy is too transparent for a human. He's a ghost. And huge claws cut through this guy's sneakers. So he's probably a werewolf. Tyler wins a cute teddy bear for Mary. They get distracted for a second and then see that the toy is gone. They look around and find three suspects. Can you guess who is a thief? Although this lady is holding a similar teddy bear, it still has a different bow. This guy is carrying a box, and judging by his posture, it's hard for him to carry it. So it's probably really filled with heavy stuff. And the third guy's guitar is outside the bag. Which means he can be hiding the teddy bear inside the guitar case. Tyler throws an epic party at the amusement park. All guests are treated to free food and drinks. In the middle of the party, all the guests begin to fall asleep right on the dance floor. The next day, doctors check all the food and drinks from the party, and everything is perfectly fine. Can you guess what happened here? These balloons were filled with sleeping gas. In the middle of the party, they burst and made the guests fall asleep.
A new ice cream parlor opens up in Matt's neighborhood. Yeah. He goes there to check it out. It's pretty crowded because they offer one free ice cream serving to each customer. Mm. Matt meets a pretty lady named Kitty in the line. He falls in love with her right away, but unfortunately, she's already married. Oh. Can you find her husband among these guys? It's the second man. He's the only one who doesn't hold any ice cream. And Kitty is holding two ice cream servings, one for herself and one for her spouse. The next day, Matt missed his alarm. And now he's late for work. His boss is going to be furious. Matt might even get fired. But wait a minute. It turned out that the big boss is out of the office today. He's having a last minute business trip, so Matt can relax. Yeah. But suddenly, the boss calls him on the phone. Hello. Where are you? You got 10 minutes to get to the office. Matt replies, I am in the subway right now. Hmm. Well, I got something I need you to do for me. Call me when you're in the office. Matt is a pretty genius liar. Yeah. How did he fool his boss? Matt had a subway noise track on his computer. He played it when he was on the phone with the boss. Clever. Matt enters the local bakery on the way to the office. Hello. The cook brings two trays with fresh tartines. Take your time and try to spot 10 differences between them. Ready to see the answer? Here they are. What about these two breakfasts? Can you find 10 differences? Over here. Matt arrives at the office. Oh no. Oh. Someone has changed the password on their corporate computer. It consists of seven digits. Matt texts his co-worker and asks about the new code. He receives the following reply. Can you help him figure out the code? The number of fingers implies the right digit in the password. So Matt should enter 1, 0, 5, 2, 3, 1, and 0. Matt is an illustrator. His boss sends some files and asks him to separate the images and add some colors. Oh. Unfortunately, all the layers are merged. Can you spot six different objects in this picture? Here they are. What about this one? Can you spot 11 objects? Over here. Matt's sister, Ashley, is getting married. He arrives at the event, and she asks him to take a picture of her with some friends. But someone pranks the bride in the middle of the photo shoot and spills paint on her beautiful dress. Can you guess who did it by just looking at this picture? It's the man on the right. He has a rope in his hands, and it's tied to the bucket. Ashley changes and the wedding goes great. After the ceremony, they throw a party in a restaurant. This place is very popular among the newlyweds. Matt faces three brides in the lobby and spots the fake one right away. Hello. What about you? It's the third lady. She's wearing regular jeans and sneakers under her dress. And also, she's wearing a wig. She must be just trying on a costume. <laughs> the wedding dinner begins, and the waiters serve the first course. But suddenly, the lights turn off for 15 seconds. When the power is back again, Matt finds out that his golden watch is gone. He questions four suspects. Karen says, I was eating the wedding cake when the light turned off. It was delicious. Nick says, I was talking on the phone with my grandpa. When it got dark, I just continued our conversation. David says, I was washing my hands in the bathroom. And Stella says, I was taking pictures of the food for my Instagram. The local cuisine is so fancy. Who's lying?
Karen. She said she was eating the cake. But take a look at the wedding cake. It hasn't been cut yet. The dinner has just started. It so happened that Matt is spending the Christmas holidays with three of his ex-girlfriends. They go to a fancy ski resort in Alaska. It was the first day of vacation when Matt was found poisoned in his bedroom. The police interrogate his ex-girlfriend.